in my limited understanding or whatever little time i have spent in understanding commodities and natural resources my my belief is that the fundamental variable the most important variable in that uh, space is supply and and you you write in your uh, research report as well that the most powerful and durable commodity bull markets are those that are built not on rapidly rising demand but on structurally con constrained supply could you expand on this and where are we today in terms of supply and why are we there yeah that's i mean that's really the cornerstone of what i think is the the legitimate bull case for for resources here and i think a lot of people have 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 boiled the commodity case down to either a you've got to have rapidly rising economic growth like uh, you know we did in the 2000s with an industrializing china you know or you have to have this you know cpi prints 5 or 6 or 7 um and i think i think people are are making it too complicated quite honestly um you know what drives commodities is is supply and demand and if you assume a you know kind of a modestly growing demand environment you know you got to pay attention to the supply and so when you do pivot to that and you look at what the supply side uh, has done and, and we have done a lot of work on this um, one of the statistics that i pull is if you look at the last 20 plus years of capital expenditures for the s&p global natural resource index which is i think like 85 companies across energy mining basic materials all of these companies they at one point i think in 2011 was the peak they were spending about 165 billion dollars quarter Mm -hmm. um, building new projects, um, filling their future pipeline with supply, you know, and a lot of times that takes five, 10, 15 years to come to fruition. Um, it started to decline at that point, declined pretty dramatically. Uh, and for the last kind of three or four quarters, COVID kind of stuck its, uh, stuck its boot on its head. Um, that 160 plus billion dollars of quarterly spend has gone down to about 45. Um, so, the money spent to both bring on stream and to replenish the reserves of the natural resource focused companies. Um, and again, these are all the big publicly traded ones that you can think of, energy, mining, you name it. Um, that has cons constricted by 65%. Uh, and yet we are now producing 25% broadly, if you talk about all commodities, broadly producing kind of 20 or 25% more than we were 10 years ago when that peak happens. Um, so I guess the natural inclination is, you know, gee, we can pat ourselves on the back. We've gotten so much more efficient at producing these commodities. And that's not actually the case. What we've been doing is living off of supply that we built up in the great commodity bull run of 2000 to 2008. And in the aftermath of that, where people were still allocating capital, like you had a China infrastructure growth story. So you had this big backlog of projects, and that's part of the reasons why commodities perform so poorly. It's definitely part of the reason that commodity equities perform so poorly because they just misallocated a bunch of capital, built too much supply, they shot themselves in the foot, um, and they had to deal with subpar returns after you know issuing a ton of equity and debt for the better part of a decade. Um, but the piper is coming due. You know, we have taken those projects that they built with that money from 2000 to 2010. And that's what we built in kind of 2010 to 2018. The pipeline is, is relatively dry here. And the cost to produce commodities is not going down. It's yeah. going up. The capital intensivity and even what we view as kind of the great technological um, resource play um, of the last 15 years, which is U.S. shale, costs are going up. You know, they were telling us, to, you know, seven or eight years ago that you could do it at 25 or 30 bucks a barrel. None of these companies are making money at $60 a barrel. So, um, or at least broadly, the industry is not. So you can say the same thing in the copper space. Gold space is very much the same. Capital expenditures have risen dramatically, but the amount of gold they're finding is falling. Hmm. So we can't rely on this subpar 40 to $50 billion a quarter of capital expenditures to deliver or sustain the level of resource production that we've had. So what I think is it sets up something that's wonderful, which is you know, a, 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 a modestly rising supply dynamic. And we can talk a little bit about some of the individual commodities and what looks better than others and, and sort of how I would rank them. Um, but running smack dab into a incredibly, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, an open field empty of 
new supply to come on board. You know, with that, you also have a bunch of energy and mining company executives who have been chastised relentlessly by Wall Street for the last decade every time they've tried to, to grow. Uh, and so now they've done exactly what the market told them to do. They have paid down debt. They are paying big dividends. They're returning the cash to shareholders. They are not growing. And now, you know, here we are. Yeah. Um, so it, I think it makes for a very, very interesting issue that can't be fixed quickly. You know, even the head of Freeport, um, you know, came out and said yesterday, you know, if you came to me and guaranteed me, you know, six or $7 copper, I could get you more supply in seven years. You know, head of, uh, you know, head of Glencore said the same thing. So it's, um, it's going to be a very interesting time. And I think we haven't seen anything like this in, you know, really since the kind of 70s. Um, and, and so I, I'm not comparing this time economically or inflation wise to the 70s, mm -hmm. but in terms of resource constraint, I actually think it may even be better than the 70s because there's an artificialness to that with OPEC withholding supply. Now I just think the barrels aren't easily available and nor are the pounds of copper uh, or the tons of nickel or the, you know, uh, you know, uh, any of these things. It's, uh, it's, gonna, it's setting up to be a very, very different sort of backdrop. And the world really hasn't figured that out. Great. Uh, so just, uh, I mean, just want to uh, bring to fore that particular quantitative number that you mentioned. So you mentioned mm -hmm. there's a capital expenditure of around 40, 45 billion dollars per quarter that is right now. When was the last time we saw this this lower number, uh, I mean, I, I think that that context might be interesting to uh, have. Um, you know, it's, I think it was back in 2001. Wow. Um, I've actually got my presentation here that I can take a quick peek at. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's actually, it is relatively unprecedented uh, in terms of, 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 you know, it's, it's really never been this low. In fact, yeah, so I've got it right here. Um, you can go back to, you know, maybe one year in 2005, but it was higher than this in 2004. It was higher all the way through 06, ramped very steadily up to that kind of 160 billion uh, in, in 2012. Uh, and um, it has been declined. It fell as far as about 60 billion a quarter in 2015 and has never really recovered. Great. So, so it's so we are, I mean, the world is, the, the natural resource companies globally are spending an amount they last spent, I mean, the, an amount that's so low that it was last seen in 2005. And we have a more inefficient capital expenditure, we can argue today, because the marginal geology has only become worse and the technology has not been able to keep up with the deterioration of the geology as well. So, I mean, it's, it's very, very interesting. I mean, the, I can see why the why you say the constraint in supply is probably one of the worst that we've seen in the last few decades. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, quite honestly, I'm not, I'm not sure we've seen something like this since, you know, maybe even, even going back in sort of the, the, the kind of 50s post-war um, wow. okay. to the point where you really had constrained supply where you didn't have a good fix that was less than five to seven years out. Wow, yeah. Uh, 